All right, 2.6, solving exponential and logarithmic equations. So a couple basic things um, that we need to just kind of talk about that's, that we're going to build on here. Like if you if you have some base to the exponent of x and some and that's equal to some same base but with a different exponent, that means the exponents have to be the same thing. Okay, they have to be equal. In the same regard, if you have a log with the same base of x and of y, then those things have to be equal as well. So we're going to use this to solve some equations. Let me show you what I mean. Let's take a look at this first one. Let's solve this equation. Whoa, that was weird. Well, right now the bases do not match, but I could make the bases match because I could replace this 49 with 7 squared to the 2x plus 1. And any time you have an exponent to an exponent, you just multiply. So this would be like saying 2, you just uh, distribute that, 2 times 2x plus 1. So this is really like saying 7 to the 4x plus 2 is equal to 7 to the 3x plus 4. Once the bases are exactly the same, you could just drop the bases and set the tops equal to each other. Now, it has to be exactly the same. We can only have one 7 over here and one 7 over here, and they have to be exactly the same, not like 2 times 7 or anything like that. But if they're exactly the same, the exponents must be exactly the same as well. And so I can make a new equation that basically says 3x plus 4 equals 4x plus 2. And I can just solve this, subtract... Um, actually, I would subtract 3x from both sides and subtract 2 from both sides so that that cancels and that cancels. And so I have 4 minus 2 is 2, and 4x minus 3x is just x, so x must equal 2. Just as easy as that. Let's go on to the next one. So here we're trying to get them to have the same base. Now, sometimes you have to change both to get the common base. And the common base here is going to be, I don't know if you can see or not, but it's going to be 5. See, we're going to rewrite this 25 as 5 squared to the 2x plus 3. And over here, this 5 to the negative, or this 1 over 5 is the same thing as 5 to the negative 1 to the 7x minus 1. And then I'm just going to multiply these. Right? So 2 times 2x is 4x, 2 times 3 is 6, and negative 1 times 7x is negative 7x, and negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. And then I just have a very simple algebra problem to do. Subtract 4x from both sides. Subtract 1, subtract 1. And so then I have 5 equals negative 11x. Divide both sides by negative 11. So x equals negative 5 over 11. Now you could also check this. You probably need a calculator, but you could just plug this entire expression into a calculator, but, but use parentheses up here for the exponent and use parentheses when you plug in negative 5 elevens. And you're going to get a crazy weird answer most of the time, like a crazy decimal answer, but that's okay. Just do the same thing over here by plugging in a negative 5 elevens. So do one fifth to whatever you get from, you know, plugging in negative 5 elevens. Again, use parentheses and you should get exactly the same thing if you did it right. So try that on your calculator just to make sure you know what to do. And if you don't get the right one, ask me about it in class. Or if you don't get the same result on both sides, I mean. All right, the next one, number three, is one you're going to just do on your own. First, I just want to say a couple things that might help you. I would say that 16 is the same thing as 4 squared. So that should help you figure out how you could write this as a base of 4 and maybe how you could write this as a base of 4. All right, go ahead, pause the video, and then when you're ready, check your work, unpause it. All right, so the common base you want to have here is 4, so you could write this as 4 to the negative 2, since 4 squared is 16, 4 to the negative 2 is 1 over 16, and 64 happens to be 4 cubed, and then you distribute the negative 2, and then you just solve for m, and you should get 5 over 6. All right, let's go to number 4. So this one now, it's already in exponent form, and we're going to take a logarithm of both sides. Let me show you what I mean. Now, when I say take a logarithm of both sides, I'm not saying rewrite it as a log, which is something is a strategy you could use in the future. But what I am saying is simply just take the logarithm of both sides. Let me show you what I mean. Like this. If I wrote log log of 4x equals log of 15, right? If this is true, then this is true. And we learned that if you have an exponent inside the log, you can move it out front, right? So I can put it out here. Now it's no longer there. So what I really have here is 
x times the log of 4 equals the log of 15. Well, if I want the x all by itself, all I have to do is divide both sides by the log of 4. And these cancel. And so now I get that x equals log 15 over log of 4, which, if you plug in your calculator, you're going to get a decimal about 1.953. And generally, we're going to go to three decimal places here uh, for our final answer when it comes to logarithms. Okay, there's my answer for number four. All right, well, what if it gets a little bit more complicated, like number five here? Well, what you want to do is you want to get the part with the exponent all by itself. So how do I do that? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is divide both sides by nine. So then I get this new equation that says 10 to the 6x equals 45 divided by 9 is 5. Now I can take the log of both sides. And actually, oh, I should have done this over here. I just used a regular log before, and that's fine. But you don't have to use a regular log. You can use any log, and it'll be the same thing. So, like, we use the common log is what this is, which is a base 10. Um, and I could use the common log here. But I also could just as easily use the natural log. So what if I did the natural log of both sides? Well, I would get, just put an ln, put an ln. Once again... I'd have an exponent that I can move out front. So I would have 6 natural log of 10 equals the natural log of 5. And this is really just algebra if you think about it. This is like saying 6 times x times the natural log of 10 equals the natural log of 5. And I just want to undo that multiplication. So what I can do is I can just divide both of these by 6 ln 10. 6 ln 10. That'll cancel, that'll cancel, and so I get as my answer that x would equal the natural log of 5 over 6 natural log of 10. It would be the same thing if I would have used just a regular log. Log of 5 over 6 log of 10. You could plug both these in the calculator and you'll get exactly the same thing. Which would be... 0 0.116, about. Again, I'm rounding. So it doesn't matter which log you use. It really doesn't. Um, if you want to write one last letter, you can just do the natural log of both sides. The only time it's going to matter is if you're actually rewriting it from exponential form to a log. Then it matters what your base is. But if you're doing the log of both sides, like I did here, you could use any log you want, really. Okay, let's talk about number six. Um, number six is a little bit weird because it looks like the six is part of the problem, but it's not. Remember, you got to do a little bit of algebra to get this part all by itself. So I'm going to do that with you first, okay? We're going to subtract seven from both sides, and you're going to get 80. And over here I have five times 14 to the nine and plus eight. And then what we're going to do is we're going to divide both sides by, fi by five. And then these would cancel. So now we have a new equation of 14 to the nine and plus eight equals 80 divided by 15 or 5, which is 16. All right, now for this, we're going to take the log of both sides and solve. Go ahead and do that, and then check back with me when you're ready to check your work. Okay, so here's my work on how I did it. I took the log of both sides, and then I recognize that this exponent now could be written out in front, but I'm going to use parentheses because it's a whole expression. So it's this whole thing times the log of 14 that equals log 16. Divide both sides by log of 14. Then I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides. After I subtract 8, I get 9n equals all this. I'm going to divide both sides by 9. And the 9s will cancel out. So I get this whole expression equals negative 0 0.0772. Now, that's if I took the log of both sides. I wanted to show you how from here you could... Um, do the whole thing by rewriting it as a log. So I'm going to try to, I'm going to write it over here and I'm going to zoom in 14, 9 plus 8 equals 16. So let's zoom in on just this and play with just this problem. I could rewrite this all as a log. Log, my base is 14 of 16 equals 9n plus 8, right? Remember, all I did is drop the base, flip the exponent, flip the exponent and the result, flip the exponent and the result. Okay, now I just have a simple algebra problem, so I'm just going to subtract 8. So now I have log base 14 of 16 minus 8 equals 9n. And then divide both sides by 9. 
and I get the exact same thing. Here's why that's the exact same thing. It turns out that this expression, um, log 14, 16, is the same thing as log of 16 over log of 14. They're exactly the same thing. So um, we get the exact same numbers. I mean, if you have a calculator where you could put in different base logs, you can put all of this in your calculator and you'll get the exact same amount I did. So what's the rule for that? That's the change of base formula that we've learned before. Uh, basically, it looks something like this. If you have log base A of B, that's the same thing as log of B over log of A. Common log B over common log A. Um, that was in the last video. They might have used different letters. But that's why that's true. So there's a lot of different ways to attack these types of problems. You do what makes the most sense for you as long as you're following your rules. I um, showed you two ways to handle it, but up to you how you really want to do it. All right, let's move on. Let's talk about number seven here, exponentiating both sides. Okay, similar ideas before. I want to get the log part all by itself. So the very first thing I have to do is add seven to both sides. And now I have log base two of B equals four. Now it's pretty simple. All I need to do now is rewrite it in exponential form. So that's what I mean by exponentiate. So if I wrote this in exponential form, I'd have two to the four equals B. Well, two to the fourth is 16. And so therefore I have just found out what B is. Boom. What about here? Well, once again, I want to get this part, the logarithm part all by itself. So I'm going to add five to both sides. I get the natural log of X minus six equals nine. Remember that this is just means like, this is the same thing as saying log base E. So the base is E. So I'm going to write E to the ninth equals what's ever inside the log, X minus six. So I'm going to write E to the ninth plus six equals X. Now this ends up being a pretty big number. If you plug this in your calculator, you're going to get something like 8,109.084. Boom. All right, let's take a look at this guy, number nine. You're going to do this on your own for the most part, but I will say this. Let's do the little algebra parts together, right? So I'm going to add five to both sides. So you get negative seven log three and minus 10 equals negative seven. And then sure enough, you should see it right here, right? If you just divide both sides by negative seven, you're going to get log base three of n minus 10 equals positive one. Now, exponentiate this and then solve for n. And then check back when you're ready to check your work. Okay, from here, it should have been pretty easy. You're gonna write three to the power one equals n minus 10. Three to the power one is just three. Add 10 to both sides, you get that n equals 13. All right, very cool. Let's go to the next page. So now we're onto a little bit of an application concept, and here's an exponential equation that's um, used in the real world. This is about uh, cooling, it's about cooling. So I wanna give you some basic details here and give you one word problem how we could use this type of problem. So let's fill this out together. T of T, this is the temperature of the object after time T, right? So then this is like the, the end result. You know, the end result after so much time has passed, all right? Um, T of S, T of S is the temperature of the surrounding environment. So usually the air around it, or I mean, if it's underwater, it'd be the water around it and so on. Uh, T of zero is the initial temperature of the object at time T equals zero. That's important it's when it's T equals zero. That's why it's T, T sub zero. Okay, and let's do a different color here. Maybe I could do like purple. So let's do K, we'll do K and purple. K is a constant that changes depending on the material properties of the object. So for example, uh, like water's K value is gonna be different than like sand or gold or whatever it is the thing that you're doing or air, whatever the, the thing is that we're, we're measuring. And then T, T is the amount of time in minutes that has passed 
since the object began cooling, since it started cooling down. All right, well, let's use that to do this word problem. And as we do that, we're going to have some um, information that we're going to pull out as we read through this. So I went ahead and copied down the equation from above and kind of color coordinated it so that we can kind of see these pieces a little bit easier. So um, it says, Mr. Bress loves his pizza. Unfortunately, every time, he every time he takes it out of the oven, he burns his tongue because he's too impatient to wait for it to cool. If only he understood Newton's law of cooling. We're going to help him. We measure the room temperature to be 72 degrees. Okay, right away, 72 degrees, room temperature. I'll make a list of what that is. That's my surrounding temperature. So my T sub S is 72 degrees Fahrenheit. By the way, we would want all of our units to be the same. And in this case, they are. So we don't have to really worry about that too much. Okay. The pizza is cooked at 425. Ah, so that's the temperature that the pizza is when I pull it out. That sounds like an initial temperature to me. From the moment the pizza comes out of the oven, we wait two minutes and the measure of the temperature of the pizza to be 285. Oh, and then the measure, sorry, it's 285. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that T of two minutes would equal 285. So that's, we could think of that at, at time equaling two. Keep that in mind. Okay, we have a lot of the information here. Oh, let's keep reading though. How long after taking the pizza out of the oven should Mr. Breast wait for the pizza to reach 120 degrees? 120 degrees is a safe time to eat, safe temperature to eat. Uh, food. Okay, here's the thing. We cannot answer this last question yet. So as great as it would be to answer this question, we're going to have to put that on the back burner. Because in order to answer this question, we really need to know what um, K is. And we do not know that. So we're going to solve for K, and then we can use this equation to answer what they're asking. So let's let's plug in what we know to solve for K. So we know that when the time is two, we should get 285 here. We know that the surrounding temperature is 72 degrees. We know that the initial temperature is 425, but we're gonna subtract the surrounding temperature of 72 degrees from that. And then we're gonna write E to the negative K times T, remember that's at 2 because we plugged in a 2. All right, so now we just have some algebra to do. Okay, well, what would I do? First thing I would do is subtract this 72 from both sides. That would give me 283 equals, and then 425 minus 72 is 353 e to the negative 2 k. All right, remember, we're trying to solve for k. So I got to divide both sides by this 353. And then I have a base E here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, rewrite this in logarithmic form with a base of E. So what would that look like? That would be like log base E or ln E of 283 over 353. Now I could get a decimal here, but I'm going to leave it in exact form for now equals my exponent, which is negative 2k. And I want to solve for k, so I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2. All right, that cancels. So here's my k value, but I don't want, I don't want to plug all this into a big old nasty equation already. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this in my calculator, and I'm going to round. And since I usually use three decimals, I'm going to round to four, because here's why. I'm going to be taking this value and plugging it into another equation, and then solving. So I kind of want to go one decimal beyond what is needed so that I know that when I round later on, I'll be a little bit more precise. So if I plug this all into my calculator, I get about 0 0.2526. All right, that's very important. Now that I know what my k is, now I can go back to this original equation. Well, I'd actually, I would kind of go back to this one, except for the red ones, because the red ones are what can change, right? Because that's my input, that's my output. And I'm going to redo this problem now, okay? So I want to know t of t equals 72 plus, we already did 425 minus 72 to get 353. 
e to the negative, and now I can plug in this k value, 0 0.2526t. And now let's read this question. It says, how long after taking pizza out of the oven should Mr. Bruss wait for the pizza to reach 120 degrees? So we want this, we want this to be 120 degrees. And then what we're going to do is we're going to work backwards and solve for the time t that it takes to do that. So let's have some fun. Let's do it. So that's going to be 120 equals 72 plus 353 e negative 0.2526t. All right. From here, I think you guys can do it. Um, I want you to just go ahead and uh, pause the video, try to work it out on your own, and then I'll put the rest of the work up there once you're done doing it on your own. It's for you to check your work. Okay. So here's a basic, did some basic algebra, subtracted 72, then divided both sides by 353. So I got this e to the negative 0.2526t all by itself. Then I could take the natural log of both sides. When I take the natural log of this, I get this. When I take the natural log of this, natural log of e cancels out to just give me the exponent. Then I could divide both sides by 0.256, and I get this big old nasty expression. Plug that in, I get about 7.899. Remember, I did four decimal places here so that I can have three accurate here. That's not always going to be perfect, but that's a general rule of thumb. If you just go a little bit extra on uh, something you're going to use in another equation, it'll help this end result be a little bit more accurate. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm not going to tell him 7.899 minutes, right? I mean, think about the context of the problem. We want to know how long he should wait. I would just say, hey, man, you should wait about eight minutes, right? The context of the problem matters how we would answer it. So it doesn't really make sense to say, you're going to wait 7.899 minutes. You would just say, yeah, it's going to be about eight minutes. Okay. That's it for this video. Please make sure you um, write your um, question that you have for me and we'll talk about them in class.